Hi everyone, it's me Nina. Um, thought I'd take you into the kitchen with me today. And we are getting ready to fix dinner. I thought about making some soup beans, which I am going to once again cheat and use the Lux brand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make some sweet potatoes along with an acorn squash just so that I have them. I can keep them in the refrigerator after they're done and I'll have those ready to eat on maybe for lunch tomorrow. So let's get started. Okay, to get started, we are going to start with an acorn squash. If you haven't tried one of these, this is one way that I love to fix it and I'm sure that you guys will love it also. Um, let's start our oven at 350. We're going to bake this for about an hour and a half. Okay, I've already washed the acorn squash and we are going to cut it in half. They're pretty tough. Uh, not quite as tough as a spaghetti squash, but they're still pretty tough. So, And there we go. So the only thing that we're going to clean out is this part where the seeds are. So I just get a spoon. There's the oven. It's ready. And just take all of this stuff out. You can actually save some of the seeds if you'd like to grow these in your garden next year. Which I think that I'm going to do that with these. It's a pretty good size. And I have already washed, I washed all this before. Um, that way when I cut into it, it was nice and clean. And next you're going to get a baking dish. And we're going to put them upside down. Then what I do is I take several cups of water, just plain water. And that looks about perfect. You can kind of tell where it's at over here on the side. And we're going to place this in the oven for around an hour and a half. Okay, and then next, I'm going to go ahead and put in some sweet potatoes. These are going to be probably for tomorrow's lunch. But while I'm using the oven, and it's going to be on for so long, I usually bake these at 400 for about 40, 45 minutes. But today, since the oven's at 350, and I'm going to be baking that acorn squash for an hour and a half, I can go ahead and put these on in the oven, save a little electricity doing, you know, a couple meals at once, and just use the fork and put a bunch of holes in it. Now I always put something in the bottom of a baking dish so that way it, uh, it's not going to be as hard to clean because these will lose some juice into the bottom of the pan and that's sometimes hard to get out of there. So, so I just wash these potatoes and dry them off a little. And for right now, this is exactly how I'm going to put them in the oven. Don't have to add anything. I think that's why so many of the ladies that I watch on YouTube that have a lot of children still living at home, I think that's why they do some of that bulk cooking. Because honestly, if your oven's going to be hot for that amount of time, you might as well you know, cook what else you can that you can prepare for the next day just by heating up in the microwave or something, so. And while the squash and stuff is in the oven, I thought I would come out and show you the chickens. They've already eaten almost another, another pumpkin. The other half's in the other side of the run, over there. Hi, girls. Hi, girls. Hi, Romeo. I haven't shown you guys in a few days. Yeah. 
How are you doing? There's Miss Susie. Well, where'd she go? There he is. Hi, Susie. And they're all doing wonderful. I try to put my face over here behind the, the pole on the swing to keep that sun out of my eyes. It's so bright, which it's beautiful, but it's a chilly day today, but I'm very thankful for the sunshine. Listen to the chicks. Oh, those chickens like to make noises. Did you guys notice though how pretty they look? How they are hardly have any molting going on at all? Which is, I'm very glad for that. I don't worry about them as bad. And I know when the snow starts flying, which we had one snowfall already, but when it starts sticking, they're gonna be fine. Uh, yes, they've got that wonderful coop that we have and there's enough of them this year that their body heat is naturally hot anyway. So there's enough of them this year that they'll really stay warm in there instead of us having to use that little heater that we bought that looks like a little um, flat screen TV. We won't have to use that this year, I don't believe, unless we get some very, very bitter cold weather. Um, you know, like in the teens or below, we might hook it in then. A semi going up the road. Uh, but I was just sitting here while we're waiting on the food to um, cook in the oven, and I was thinking, I actually miss the garden. I know there for a few weeks, I was just so exhausted that I was like, oh, I just don't know if I can do this again and can all that food. But, you know, we, we made it. With Steve's help, he really, really helped me and we got it all done. The only thing that I have not finished yet is we actually have tomatoes in the deep freezer and they will be fine until I decide what I'm gonna make. I made, as you guys know, a bunch of salsa and all that. So I'm thinking about preparing either spaghetti sauce or um, maybe pizza sauce, stuff like that. So I've got all of those tomatoes in there and if I decide to do them here in the next, you know, little bit, um, I will show you guys how I take care of doing those too. Um, it's really nice to know that if your health doesn't permit you to or if you're just exhausted, that you can actually just put your bags of tomatoes in the freezer and they will be absolutely fine until you're ready to, to deal with them. So that really helps. But yeah, looking at the empty garden space, Steve has got all of that plastic, you know, it was actually for um, landscaping, but it worked perfect for the garden. We didn't have to weed it at all. And so he put all of that away, folded it up. We're gonna be able to use that again several times probably. And you know, a lot of, a lot of people ask us, well, was it worth it? Because you know, it is an expense that you have to purchase. And to me, it was absolutely worth it. Uh, because now we can just bring it out next spring and like I said probably for several springs and with our health especially you know I have those um, the three D's in your back degenerative disc disease and so you know all through my spine and my neck and I it really bothers me to have to pull weeds or actually even to hoe to get the weeds out so this year it was so amazing to me that we didn't have to weed not any and wow yes it was worth it it was worth it so if you're older and you have health problems or even if you are young and you just can't stand to weed it probably would be a good investment for you to go ahead and try some of that black landscaping material and remember um, not to cut the holes to burn them we just got one of our little torches out and Steve went along and burned all the holes. You can go back in some of the videos when we were getting ready for the garden and see how he did that. And it worked out perfect. So yeah, I would highly suggest that for you. All right, we're gonna get out. Woo wee. No. Gonna get out the butternut squash and the sweet potato. I'm gonna pour out the water that's in here. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now, this is how I do it. Just try to get out all of the good stuff. It smells good. So pretty, isn't it? The color is so bright. Let me get this done and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, I've got it all in here. Now, what I like to do, and you don't have to add this stuff if you don't want, but I just put a couple pats of butter. And some pink Himalayan sea salt. And on top of that, I will put some brown sugar. And then we're going to stick it, that's a little hard piece, stick it back in the oven under the broiler, just enough time under the broiler to make it caramelized. You don't have to use this much, Steve. Like. And there we are. Doesn't that look delicious? Let's get our plates made. All right, so we've got everything ready. Some of it is leftovers, which makes it even better. Um, so this is butternut squash. I think I was calling it acorn squash earlier, but it is butternut squash. And then we have got some pork loin and garlic bread and some beans so barbecue sauce yeah he put barbecue sauce on this pork loin but it was actually a pork roast and we just had it cut up and it'd be good eating so everyone thanks so much for watching have a great night and we'll see you real soon